Welcome back everybody. Today we're going over this upper receiver that you see in my hand right now and that you saw throughout the intro. This one's from PWS and it's their Mod 2. And uh, this one happens to be chambered in 7.62 by 3.9. So um, let's kind of get into that a little bit. They make them in uh, different calibers. So this one, 7.60 by 3.9 of course, 300 blackout as well as a 223 wild one that of course fires 5.56 and 2.23. All of those calibers come in three different sizes. So they have the 16 inch versions of them for, for folks who want to run them on a rifle and then they have uh, a little bit shorter it depends on the caliber um, which is the medium size one that we have here uh, with the 11.85 inch barrel and 7.60 by 3.9 and then they have like the really small ones I think seven or eight inches in both of those calibers as well um, so three different sizes three different calibers but the medium sized ones that we have here uh, were designed to be able to according to them uh, deliver effective lethal fire out to 300 yards so for each uh, caliber of course it's going to vary a little bit in terms of length but that is how they designed it and sort of the thinking behind it so this one here we have a good bit of rounds to uh, just over 1200 rounds so quite a bit and uh, we've had a grand total of zero malfunctions i'll tell you that right up front we've not had a single failure of any kind uh, with any ammo with any magazine but we'll get into the magazines a little bit more later on here as well but what we're going to do is let the dogs take a look at it make sure it passes their inspection and then uh, do a little bit more shooting check out the accuracy of it see how it does sort of with the caliber that's generally speaking not thought of as being all that accurate out of this modern barrel and modern system and uh, then we'll get into the details of it and at the end we'll wrap it up like always accuracy test we have a target down range at 100 yards we have the Trigicon uh, 1 to 4 scope on there sitting in a Nikon mount I'm trying to think of everything else we have a mil spec trigger so nothing too fancy CTK precision rest in the first round up will be some Fiocchi 124 grain this is a brass case stuff and uh, we'll see how it does Next up, we're going to run some com block stuff through there. So this is the Red Army Standard. This is the stuff made over in Russia, so it has the sealant, just like Golden Tiger, because it's made in the same plant. So we'll see how it likes this uh, Russian steel jacket and stuff. Last up, we have some uh, Federal American Eagle. We'll run through there. This is 124 grain as well. This is not match ammo, you know, but it's uh, US made brass case stuff. So theoretically should be capable of shooting some decent groups. But you never know, it's all on what the rifle likes as well. Go check it out. Looks like the first group was the winner and that was the Fiocchi. Uh, so shot pretty well there. We're right at, either way you measure it, right at an inch and a half with that group. Again, it's not match grade stuff, just all ammo. And then uh, over here with the Red Army Standard, right at two inches and three quarters, so 2.75 inches. Then down here with the American Eagle, Oh, 
right there at two and a half inches. So um, I would imagine if you had some hunting or match type loads or worked some up, if you guys are out there who reload in this caliber, you could tighten that group up a little bit. But overall, I'll take it for ball ammo. On the end of the rifle, we have our dead air. This is the uh, brake that is also a mount for their Sandman series of silencers. And that's what I've been running throughout the majority of this video. You guys have seen several different things probably though on the end of this muzzle, including uh, this little guy right here. This is their flash suppressor that they actually ship out with the rifle. And actually, I really like it. Um, I tend to be a big fan of flash suppressors. As you guys know, if you're not gonna run a silencer and you know, like 308 and smaller, I tend to really like the flash hiders um, because they minimize the noise, flash and all of those sorts of things that can be kind of annoying as a shooter. So uh, it does come with it. It's very good. If you guys want to swap it out, it takes the same thread pattern as any of your 300 black or, you know, your 7.60 by 5.1 millimeter guns. So it's pretty universal in that regard. And uh, as you see there, we did just that. There's a few things that made this upper receiver group here attractive to me and uh, made me want to get one in for review. And this certainly is one of them. It's a gas system. So it's an adjustable gas system. And as you guys see it there with the big O on there, that's how you're going to run it if you're just using, you know, standard ammunition with no suppressor. Then you can just turn it over right here. And as you can see, it's user adjustable. Anything will do. We're using the uh, ubiquitous Glock tool, but anything that you can stick in there in turn will work just fine. And then when you see those two circles, uh, that's for running it suppressed using, it, as PWS calls it, standard ammunition. And then you can rotate it over one more, and that's for running it suppressed using hotter loads or military ammunition. Now in 7.62 by 3.9, I ran it suppressed in all three settings just to kind of see how it would do and what it would feel like. And I can tell you um, it ran 100% on all of them. However, I noticed when it was uh, on the wide open setting here that it did have like way more recoil, uh, perceived recoil. Which there's not a ton of recoil either way simply because it's 7.60 by 3.9 with a long stroke piston system that we'll get into here in just a second. Um, but um, it was noticeable. And then between two and three, there was a minor difference, but for sure, if I was gonna run it suppressed using you know the loads that we ran through right here, throughout the review, which the majority of that was Red Army Standard, I'd leave it on uh, the three here um, because it's nice, soft, and smooth recoil impulse with that setting and a suppressor on there. Um, but I would imagine just with whatever you're running it, whatever configuration you're running, just play with it a little bit, see which setting feels best and functions best for you, and go with it. I'm sure some of you out there recognize this handguard by Bootleg Incorporated. Bootleg is the sister company of PWS, so that's no coincidence there. And this is what they call Pick Mods. So uh, it's patented by them. I don't think anybody else is allowed to make it. And basically, what we have here is the key mod rail attachment system throughout the length of the uh, handguard. However, then on the bottom, probably about halfway up, we do have these Picatinny slots cut in there, or 1913 slots, depending on who you are and what you call it. And we also have them here on the sides, on both sides of the handguard. So what that does, and the advantage of that, is that it gives you the capability to run any sort of key mod attachment that you want to. And you can run key mod right up here at the front. I did it throughout the review with zero issues. Um, but if you want to run a 1913 mounted uh, device, whether it be like a vertical foregrip down here, or like a PEC-15, or some of the other laser aiming devices out there, the 1913 rail gives you a little bit more of a uh, better uh, return to zero. It also gives you a better holding of zero throughout uh, rough impacts and stuff like that than key mod or m -lock for that matter. Um, and then on the top of the rail here, we do have a continuous 1913 section on the top, which certainly is nice. And as you guys already saw, we have that cut out there for the gas adjustment. You can do it very easily without having to sort of stick a special tool through there or uh, any other various adjustment method methods that other companies use. So all in all, seems to be a pretty solid handguard. The barrel is 11.85 inches long. It has a one in 10 twist and it's made from 416R stainless steel. And then they actually contour it themselves at PWS and bring it down to the taper that you see here. So it's sort of a continuous taper from the muzzle all the way out to the barrel, which I do like. You guys have probably heard me talk about that here before on the channel. I think the government profile is probably the dumbest profile out there on the planet with most of the weight on at the end and being skinny in the rear. It should be just be the opposite, which is what this is here. So um, I do like the barrel profile. It's probably a little bit thicker than I would personally pick, but overall the upper is nice and lightweight still. So uh, it's under four pounds pounds of the whole upper so you can't really be too mad about it and under four pounds with the piston system is pretty good in terms of uh, overall weight there so they do uh, melanite or nitrocarburize that barrel throughout to give it good corrosion resistance as well as wear resistance uh, which is important particularly in 
7.62 by 3.9. Of course, they make these in the other calibers. But with that uh, 7.62 by 3.9, I think a lot of folks are going to be running some steel case through there and steel jacketed bullets, which can uh, lead to a little bit uh, quicker erosion. So having that nitrocarburized finish in there, both inside and out of the barrel, is important. Now we're going to talk about the actual long stroke piston system that PWS uses. Now, um, in the past, you guys have probably heard me say disparaging things about piston uh, rifles, of the AR-15s anyway, and I stand by that because the majority of them use a crappy system uh, that can cause all kinds of wear on the lower receiver as well as the receiver extension and has other issues that can be uh, found with any sort of high round count piston uppers. There's two exceptions to that for AR-15 piston uppers, and PWS is one of them. I've also said that before, so I have my rounds covered there. Basically this system here, I'm going to roll in some uh, video. Uh, the first video here is going to be me. I actually shot this out at um, in Tacoma, Washington rather, at TriggerCon with one of their cutouts and then I'm also going to roll in some high definition uh, actual shooting video from them uh, over on their YouTube channel that we pulled so you guys can get a better idea sort of how this system works overall. But it's pretty cool and uh, it is comparable into the way the AK works, which is generally speaking going to be a good thing. So to actually remove the bolt and carrier, you need to remove the charging handle because the charging handle goes inside the actual long stroke piston. And to remove it, you basically just kind of have to push down a little bit on the flat part there. There is a flat part there on the end of the piston. If my camera will focus up close, you guys can see it there. I think you can see it. You just push that through. At this point, we can remove our charging handle. And it should be noted that it does come with the BCM Voltor charging handle, which is nice, very nice piece of kit that I've actually reviewed before. And then we're going to pull, of course, our pin out. Right, we have our firing pin. And then we'll let this sucker come out there. And you guys can see, actually, if it'll actually come out, there you go, that we do have the spring on the bolt. Now, there's a lot of things that are very different than your standard AR-15 here. Of course, the gas key is not a gas key. It's part of the piston here, so there's no gas actually coming back into uh, the carrier itself like you'd have with a regular AR-15. Now, the carrier itself um, was designed in such a way that it would actually, the weight of it would... Um, a delay rather the unlocking of the bolt uh, lowering chamber pressures and just lowering wear overall on the system so that's pretty cool and then here at the rear you guys can see well really all the way around the carrier you guys can see that there's cutouts at certain points that basically allow for minimal contact as it's going through the upper receiver just decreasing wear on the parts that are touching and also allowing for more debris to be in there and uh, the gun to still run so um, there is that. We have the bolt there that does have the fancy NP3 coating on there to basically run a little bit slicker and also have less resistance. And you guys can see it's very different looking than your standard bolt, which we'll pull out right here. There's definitely a ton of different things going on. Of course, we don't have the typical tail that you would have with your regular AR-15 bolt. And then if we look at the actual lugs themselves, um, it's much bigger. Of course, that's to accommodate a 7.62 by 3.9 round. And uh, that was definitely a concern of mine was, of course, if you guys have shot ARs for high round counts, you guys know uh, bolt shearing of the lugs is a real thing. It does happen. Um, however, I've read on the internet several people that have multiple, multiple thousands of rounds through these and have not read a single report of that happening with the PWS bolt. I would guess, my opinion, that it has to do with the slower unlocking due to the design, again, of the carrier. I would probably guess that that is exactly why that's the case. So. Getting onto the upper receiver itself, you can see we don't have any T markings on there. So if you guys want to actually mark where your optics are, you're going to have to do that with a pencil or something like that. We do not have a forward assist. Now, I do love the forward assist. I've made no mistake about that in the past. Um, but PWS was looking to lighten it up, and you guys could see they removed a little bit of material on each side. And it is a Forge 7075T6 upper. And, of course, it is all um, machined in a way that it works with the PWS system here. You guys can see the photo we're rolling in, sort of how it interfaces is there with the barrel lock up as well as the handguard. It's a pretty unique little system and I think it's very, very well thought out. Um, so that's pretty much it there for the details. Just a couple more things to touch on before we let you guys go. In the beginning, I mentioned that magazines, we were gonna get into that in just a bit, so let's get into it. Uh, this one here in the gun is an ASC mag, and then throughout the video, you guys have seen me using a couple C products mags, including this banana clip that you guys see right here. Um, so years ago, I was actually talking to Nathan from Facts and Firearms about their A-Rack upper that they were coming out with in 7.62 by 39. And uh, it's story time here with Mr. Guns and Gear. But he was telling me basically that during the 
development of that project, the thing that they found was the biggest issue was magazines um, in terms of reliability. They could get their upper to function reliably, um, but getting magazines to feed the 7.62 by 9 by 3.9 tapered round into an AR style chamber reliably was not exactly uh, easy, at least at that time. So they actually spent a ton of money with the folks over at ASC and C products all in conjunction with each other to develop sort of the current generation of 7.62 by 3.9 mags. And uh, that's what we have here. So if you pick up a, a PWS uh, 7.62 by 3.9 upper pistol, or a rifle, it will come with an ASC mag. Now the C products mags have the same sort of dimensional changes to them that the ASC ones do. I found no feeding or, or function difference between the two. However, I'll tell you the ASC mags were a little bit harder to load than the C products mags. Not sure why that is, but once we got them loaded function wise, zero issues with either one of them, uh, regardless of the ammo we put through it. The majority of the ammo that went through this gun was Red Army Standard. Um, and thank you to uh, the folks at Red Army Standard for sending it out to use in this video. Um, but anything you guys saw, I think Fioki, American Eagle, and uh, plenty of other types of ammo went through it and it didn't carry either way. It ran it all just fine. So uh, in that regard, it's pretty good. The accuracy is pretty good as you guys saw as well. And the price is something I know folks always want to know about. Looking around on the internet today, uh, these seem to be going, at least the upper receivers anyway, are going for right about $1,299 pretty much everywhere I look. So that's expensive, um, especially today in today's AR market where you can get decent rifles, you know, for... 900 bucks or cheaper so it's not cheap but it is a pretty cool little system and there certainly are some advantages to it that you're not going to see um, in traditional ar-15 so let's let's get into that real quick for folks that are new um, with this type of long stroke piston system here um, there's some things that are kind of cool about it so particularly if you're firing suppressed you get much less less uh, gas blowback in your face when you're firing long strings of rounds uh, so if you're putting you know a 28 round mag through it and just dumping it with an AR-15, a direct impingement one. Typically speaking, unless you have some sort of modification to it, you're gonna get some gas in the face uh, firing suppressed. However, with this, I didn't notice it at all, not once. And we ran a few different suppressors on this upper and uh, not a single issue there in that regard. So that certainly is nice. They tend to run cooler as well. So if you actually look at one of these through a thermal, uh, a thermal image, while it's firing, you'll see that the actual chamber area and pretty much everything back in the upper receiver does run cooler. That's absolutely true. It also deposits less carbon back in the bolt and chamber area. So any sort of potential for fouling causing a malfunction, at least in the chamber area, is reduced with a piston upper, that's for sure. Um, like I said, not all piston uppers are, are created equal. PWS makes a good one that has been proven at this point through very high round count guns that are out there. If you guys look around the internet and forums and stuff, you're gonna see a lot of folks reporting that, and uh, I absolutely believe it. Um, again, I've had zero issues with this one, so it seems to back up the claim. So that's pretty much it on that front. But yeah, the price is what it is, and we'll drop a link down below for anybody looking to pick one of these up. But all in all, I've been very happy with it. I'm very pleased with it. Um, Reliability is always number one with me. You guys know that who watch the channel, and this thing has not, um, not disappointed at all in that regard. The ergonomics are great. Of course, you have the AR-15 ergonomics that come with it. I mean, I like AKs. I love AKs, as does Tim, of course. Um, <laughs> but there's something about an AR. It just is a little bit more... Uh, intuitive for I think a lot of American shooters to fire and of course the 7.62 by 3.9 is an excellent round an intermediate round for whether it be barrier penetration hog hunting deer hunting anything like that and uh, does it pretty well and it does it inexpensively as well so that's pretty much it if you guys have any questions about the upper you can always post down below in the comment section as always if you need an answer the best place to get in touch with me these days is over at my Facebook page to post those questions and comments and uh, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And I hope to see all of you in the next video.